Prayer is an essential part of life for many people. It's a way to connect with God, seek guidance, and find strength during difficult times. When we make prayer our first step, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and blessings. This simple act can transform our outlook on challenges and help us navigate life with more confidence and clarity. When you pray first, you invite God's presence into your situation. This can bring a sense of peace, even in stressful circumstances. For example, when facing a tough decision, praying before taking action allows you to gain perspective. It helps you to pause and reflect, which often leads to wiser choices. Instead of rushing into things, prayer encourages us to seek God's will, guiding us toward the right path. Moreover, prayer can change our hearts. When we start our day or our tasks with prayer, we shift our focus from our problems to God's greatness. This can lead to a more positive attitude. We may find ourselves feeling more patient, loving, and understanding toward others. Our interactions become more meaningful and we're less likely to react negatively in tough situations. Additionally, praying first builds our faith. Each time we turn to God in prayer, we remind ourselves of His power and love. We can trust that He hears our requests and cares about our lives. Over time, this practice can strengthen our relationship with God. We begin to see how He responds to our prayers, which encourages us to keep praying even when answers don't come right away. The Bible emphasizes the importance of prayer. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This passage highlights how prayer can ease our worries and fill us with peace. When we make prayer our first response, we open ourselves to God's guidance and comfort. It can change our perspective, help us make better choices, and strengthen our faith. So next time you face a challenge, remember to pray first and watch what happens. You might be surprised by the peace and clarity that follows. What I love about God is that His ways are completely different from ours. The way He works and the things He does are beyond our understanding. When He answers our prayers, it may not be in the way we expect. Sometimes His answers come through loss. It can be painful when something is taken away, but after the initial hurt, you might see that the pain was actually a blessing in disguise. Maybe you start losing people you care about, and it hurts at first. Later, though, you realize they were causing more harm than good, and that God was answering your prayer for peace and joy by removing them. Perhaps a relationship ends, and although it brings heartache, it also brings relief from the anxiety that came with it. Or maybe you miss out on an opportunity you were excited about. But in time, you see that God had something far better planned for you. In all these situations, the good that comes out of them might not be obvious at first. But when you look back, you'll begin to see how God was graciously working on your behalf, removing people or situations that were holding you back. Isaiah 55 verse 8 reminds us that God's thoughts are not like ours and neither are His ways. Even though He doesn't like to see us in pain, He knows that sometimes pain is needed for our ultimate happiness. He understands what we need and when we need it. Our job is to trust Him and allow Him to work in our lives in His perfect way. We often have blind spots, areas in our lives that are harmful or unhealthy, and we don't even realize it. But in His mercy, God removes those things for us, replacing them with something better. So, if you're going through a difficult time, consider that God might be answering your prayers in an unexpected way. He could be rearranging your life, strengthening you, and guiding you towards something greater. God doesn't always give us what we ask for in the way we expect, but He always provides exactly what we need. Let me tell you, I've had people walk in and out of my life. Some were blessings, while others brought challenges. I've known people I thought would be in my life forever, only to see them leave. But I've also met a few who have become my encouragers and spiritual companions, even though life has taken us in different directions.
Out of all the people we encounter in life, there is only one who never disappoints. Only one can truly satisfy our soul's deepest longings. Only one has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and has kept that promise. His name is Jesus Christ. There is no one like him. No one on earth can compare. He loves unconditionally, speaks with unmatched wisdom, and is the good shepherd whose presence brings peace, healing, and renewal. When you invite Jesus into your life, he brings joy. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Even in your darkest moments, his joy remains. Even in chaos, his joy is present because Jesus is the source of true joy. So, I ask you, have you invited the Lord into your heart? Have you embraced him, the one who offers amazing grace and healing for your deepest wounds? If not, you can welcome him into your life today, and he will bring renewal and restoration. Jesus, the Son of God, is waiting for you to seek him. Will you let him into your heart today? Will you invite him into your situation? Dear Jesus, we welcome you into our lives. We know that when you come, you bring freedom. Your word in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. For those struggling with sin, bring deliverance. For those trapped in addiction, set them free. We invite you, Lord, into our hearts and homes because only you can bring lasting peace. Colossians 3 verse 15 encourages us to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and to be thankful. Through Jesus, we no longer need to strive for our salvation. He has already paid the price. All we need to do is rest in his grace and that's where true peace comes from. Lord, we choose to focus on you. We choose to give you all the praise and honor. You are the creator of all good things. Where you are, there is peace. Where you are, there is joy. Where you are, there is life because that is who you are. You freely offer yourself to those you love. Lord, you have all authority. No one can stand against you. You are able to do all that you desire. Your power and goodness are undeniable. So, Father, come into our lives now. Your presence is what our souls need, what this world longs for. Though the world often rejects you and puts faith in empty things, I will worship you and follow you. God, I invite you in. Come into our lives, our homes, and our minds. Bring healing, peace, and love, things this broken world cannot provide. Lord, cleanse our thoughts and fill us with your light. Chase away all fear, negative thoughts, and evil spirits that try to harm us. At your word, demons tremble and flee because of your power and holiness. Jesus, come into our homes and bring peace and unity. Bring these blessings not only to our families, but also to those without one. Be close to every orphan, widow, and person who feels left out. God, we ask you to heal hearts that are longing for love today. We need you, Jesus. We know there is power in your name. When you speak, chaos becomes order, darkness turns to light, and evil is defeated. Nothing unholy can stay in your presence. Lord, I believe you are doing something new. I know you stand at the door, knocking. Help me stop resisting your work in my life. I want you to have full control, so I invite you in. Show your power and glory in every part of my life. Help me make room for you in my family, my community, and everywhere I go. Awaken us to your love and grace, and make us aware of your presence daily. In Jesus' name I pray, giving you all the glory and thanks. Amen. The Apostle Paul's story is one of the most amazing in the New Testament. He was a respected Jewish leader who persecuted and even ordered the killing of Christians. But one day on the road to Damascus, he met the risen Christ. Jesus blinded him, and after three days, something miraculous happened. 
Acts 9 verse 18 says, Immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. When Jesus removed the scales from Paul's eyes, he saw the world differently. Before, he saw Christianity as offensive and wrong. But now, he saw the gospel as the most wonderful and important truth. The world didn't change, but Paul's perspective did. He let God change how he saw everything. Psalm 146 verse 8 says, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. It's interesting how two people can see or hear the same thing, but have very different interpretations. We see this in the church today. Even though we are all God's children, we may understand scriptures and Jesus' teachings in various ways. Having different opinions is okay. When it comes to things like music, fashion, or even coffee choices, we can have different tastes. But when it comes to the gospel, there is only one truth, and we must not miss it. Only when we ask God to open our spiritual eyes can we truly see the truth of Jesus Christ. One of my favorite prayers is found in Psalm 119, verse 18, which says, Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things in your law. God's ways are amazing. When we come to Christ, He changes how we see things. What once seemed ugly becomes beautiful, and what once seemed beautiful becomes ugly. We begin to hate our sin and love the teachings of Jesus. The world often mocks us, not because they deliberately choose evil, but because they can't see the truth. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. We can't gain a proper understanding of God on our own. It only happens when we ask Him to open our eyes. When God removes the scales from our eyes, Christianity stops being just a label or category. It becomes a way of life. It's no longer about denominations or doctrines, but about the urgent message of Jesus Christ that needs to be shared with everyone. Ephesians 4 verse 4 to 6 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and through all and in all. When we see clearly, Christianity becomes more than a symbol we wear. It becomes our mission to serve Jesus and share all the great things He has done. Let me be clear. God wants our hearts. He doesn't just want part of us. He wants all of us. He wants us fully committed, hungry for Him and passionately seeking His will. The Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Psalm 34, verse 18 tells us, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. We must be careful about what we allow into our lives. God doesn't tolerate lukewarm faith. He desires complete devotion. Isaiah 40, verse 25 to 26 says, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. We need to respect God and examine our lives according to his word. Now, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the ability to see and understand the beauty of the gospel. Thank you for opening my eyes and removing the scales so I can truly see your glory and grace. Open my eyes even more so I can fully appreciate your amazing grace. I was once lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see only because you have opened my eyes and given me wisdom. Lord, only you see the true realities of this world. You know what is right and wrong perfectly. Please open my eyes and grant me understanding. Forgive me if I focus on the wrong things and help me not to waste my time on minor issues. Help me to focus on the bigger picture. 
the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the message that leaves no room for misunderstanding or debate. Your word says there is one God and one mediator, Jesus Christ. Help us grasp this truth and stand in awe of it. You are all powerful and all knowing. You see everything past, present, and future. Help me not to doubt your word. Don't let doubt cloud my vision. Remove the scales from my eyes so I can see clearly. Help me not to view the world through my own flawed understanding, but through the truth of your word. Let me walk by faith, not by sight. Expand my view from the earthly to the heavenly. Give me discernment to recognize those who may seem trustworthy, but are only out to deceive. Don't let me be fooled by clever words. Give me the ability to see the true colors of the enemy, even when he disguises himself as an angel of light. Temptation may be strong, but you, God, are stronger. Help me fasten the belt of truth so none of the enemy's lies can penetrate my heart. Let me see the spiritual realities I might miss on my own. Help me see things as you do, not as my sinful heart would prefer. Make the gospel beautiful in my eyes and help me see sin for the evil it truly is. Lord Jesus, I want to see the world the way you do. Take away my own desires, biases, and judgments. Just like you opened Paul's eyes on the road to Damascus, open my heart to love you more deeply. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 1 that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is essential for every believer because only through faith can we please God. So, do you truly have faith or do you rely on your own thoughts, logic, or what you can see? Are you living and walking by faith? When we look at the heroes of faith in the Bible, we notice one thing they all shared. They kept trusting God. They had strong faith even during difficult times. It takes faith to follow Jesus and to stand firm for the gospel. The walls of Jericho fell down because of faith. Paul and Silas, even after being beaten and imprisoned, praised God. The three Hebrew boys refused to worship King Nebuchadnezzar because their faith was so strong. These examples show us how to remain steadfast and trust in the Lord, even when things seem impossible. Their faith was unshakable because they believed that God is greater and more powerful than any challenge they faced. We can learn a lot from these believers about dealing with tough times. Today, we often find ourselves in situations that test our faith, and we must decide how to respond. The Bible reminds us in 1 Peter 1 verse 6 to 7 that while we may face various trials, these challenges prove the genuineness of our faith, which is more valuable than gold and will lead to praise and honor when Jesus is revealed. No matter what you're going through, Stay strong in your faith. Don't let yourself be swayed. If you let go of God's promises, you might get caught up in the chaos of this world. Jesus Christ is our firm foundation and anchor. People and circumstances change, but God's word is forever true. In Matthew, Jesus says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. This is why we can confidently trust in him. You might be thinking that your faith isn't strong enough. You may feel like you need more faith, but remember, even a tiny bit of faith can be powerful. In Matthew 17, verse 20, Jesus tells us that faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. That small amount of faith is all we need. I want to encourage you to keep your faith. Your situation might be hard, but don't let it shake your trust in God. You may feel abandoned or isolated, but have faith. The Lord will be your closest companion. Doubt and unbelief are common struggles for everyone. We all face times when our faith is tested. You can overcome doubt by staying anchored in God's word. Feed on it, hold on to his promises and meditate on it. This is how faith grows stronger. 
Romans 10 verse 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When your faith is challenged, lean more on God's word. Now let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to have strong faith. Give us a tenacious faith that remains confident even in tough times. We ask for faith that doesn't give up, one that patiently waits for you. Grant us unshakable faith that can withstand life's storms, faith that isn't broken by disappointments. Help us trust you completely because you are greater and more powerful than anything that comes against us. Amen. Amen. Mark 11 verse 22 to 24 says, Have faith in God. Jesus told his followers that if someone tells a mountain to throw itself into the sea and truly believes it will happen without any doubt in their heart, it will be done for them. So whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling with doubt and unbelief. May the Holy Spirit strengthen and uplift them. Don't let them be defeated by their challenges or discouraged by the enemy. Help us not to be overwhelmed by life's problems, but to hold on to your promises. You have said that heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never fade. We trust in your precious promises, believing that total restoration is assured through your word. Thank you for giving us hope and strength for the future. I praise you for promising perfect peace to those who focus on you. Keep our minds at peace as we fight the good fight each day. You are a good and faithful God. For everyone listening, I pray that your holy presence shines in our lives and lights up our paths in this dark world. Help us to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. First, John 5 verse 4 tells us that whatever is born of God overcomes the world and our faith gives us victory. Father, help us live lives that please you. Lives of faith and not sight. If my faith is weak, strengthen me. If it wavers, keep me steady. John 7 verse 38 says that whoever believes in Jesus will have rivers of living water flowing from their heart. May your living waters fill every part of our lives with faith. I look forward to a future filled with your love, mercy, and goodness. I place all my hopes, dreams, and plans in your hands because as long as you are with us, nothing can stand against us. You are a God who supports us when we feel weak and who calms the storms in our lives. You lift us up even when we feel lost. King Jesus, you are my rock in this shaky world. Continue to be with us and give us the faith to stand firm every day. Amen. Amen. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see. Even when we face various trials, we can rejoice because these challenges prove the genuineness of our faith, which is more valuable than gold. This faith will lead to praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Have faith in God. Jesus said that if anyone tells a mountain to throw itself into the sea and truly believes without doubt, it will happen. Therefore, believe that you have received whatever you ask for in prayer, and it will be yours. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and our faith gives us that victory. Those who believe in Jesus will have rivers of living water flowing from their hearts. In today's world, we often seek comfort and convenience. We prefer things to be simple and certain. However, life can present challenges that test our strength and resilience. Different situations or the wrong group of people can challenge our self-control. Our children might test our patience, and a difficult supervisor at work can test our temper. Many people find it strange to think of God testing us. The idea that God allows certain things to happen in our lives to test us can be hard to grasp. So, what does the Bible say about this? James 1 verse 2 to 3 tells us to consider it pure joy when we face trials of many kinds because the testing of our faith produces perseverance. This is a key truth in the Bible. Our faith must be tested. Proverbs 17 verse 3 
helps explain why this testing is necessary. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Just like gold is refined in fire, God refines our heart through testing. At some point, our faith will face trials. As humans, we often think that if something feels unpleasant, it must not be from God. But God sees things differently. The trials He allows in our lives are meant to help us grow, so we lack nothing. Trials are opportunities for us to develop our faith and reach new heights. The Bible says that the testing of our faith produces perseverance, leading us to spiritual maturity. This perspective should change how we view hardships and respond to difficult times. God is always working with His children to help us become more like Christ, renewing our minds and refining our hearts. We should rejoice in knowing that God is working for us through these tests. James 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Often, we miss the beauty of our testimonies because we focus too much on our trials and lose sight of Christ. However, every trial offers a testimony of God's goodness and sovereignty. Each challenge reminds us that God is with us, shaping us as His children. 1 Peter 4, verse 13 to 16, encourages us to rejoice as we share in the sufferings of Christ, so we may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for being a Christian, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be for wrongdoing. But if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed. Instead, praise God for bearing that name. So, if you face hardships because of your faith, remember that you are blessed. Sharing in Christ's sufferings means you will rejoice when He returns. You will be rewarded for your faithfulness. No matter the difficulties you encounter in life, we hold on to this promise. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Regardless of the trouble you face, as long as you are with the Lord, you will overcome. Lord Jesus, you are full of grace and kindness. As you test my faith, I ask you to cleanse my mind of impure thoughts and any unholy desires. Create in me a clean heart and renew my spirit. I pray that each trial you send my way serves a purpose. If you want to develop patience in me, let your will be done. If you seek to foster self-control or humility, I accept your plan. Even when my faith is under pressure, help me to avoid complaining. Instead, let me focus on you, Lord Jesus. Grant me the strength to stand firm when my faith is tested and fill my heart with joy during these times. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58, I strive to be steadfast and unwavering in my faith, knowing that my efforts in the Lord are meaningful. Regardless of what happens, I will hold on to my faith in Jesus Christ. Whether the miracle I hope for happens or not, I will remain strong in my belief. If I face confusion, you are my rock, and I will trust in you. When life feels overwhelming, I ask the Holy Spirit to keep my focus on Jesus. Help me understand that the troubles I face are temporary compared to the eternal joy ahead. I want to be strong in my faith, not just when things are easy, but always, no matter the challenges. Your word in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 reminds me to examine myself and test my faith. Open my eyes to see where I stand against your word. Help me align my thoughts and actions with what a believer should be, full of integrity, prayerful, and loving. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I bless your holy name, King Jesus. Amen. James 1 verse 2 to 3 tells us to find joy in trials because they help us grow. Just as fire refines silver and gold, God tests our hearts. Blessed is the one who perseveres through trials. Blessed is the one who perseveres through trial of life, promised to those who love him. 
Rejoice in sharing in Christ's sufferings so that you may rejoice when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for being a Christian, you are blessed because God's Spirit rests upon you. However, if you suffer for wrongdoing, that's different. But if you endure hardship as a Christian, don't be ashamed. Praise God for carrying that name. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, and always devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing your labor is never wasted. Reflecting on our faith, the Apostle Paul had a remarkable story. Once a respected Jewish leader who persecuted Christians, his life changed dramatically when he met the resurrected Christ on the road to Damascus. Blinded for three days, something miraculous happened. Acts 9 verse 18 says scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. This experience transformed how Paul viewed the world. He went from seeing Christianity as vile to seeing Christianity as the most glorious cause on earth. Psalm 146 verse 8 states that the Lord opens the eyes of the blind and lifts those who are downcast. It's fascinating how two people can witness the same event yet interpret it differently. In the church, we may have various views on Scripture, but when it comes to the gospel, there is only one truth we must seek. When we ask God to restore our vision, we can see the truth of Jesus clearly. One of my main prayer requests is based on Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes to behold wondrous things from your law. God's ways are marvelous, and when we come to Christ, He changes our perspective on sin and His commands. The world may mock us, but they do so because they lack true vision. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 explains that the message of the cross seems foolish to those who are lost, but to us, it is the power of God. Our understanding of God comes not from our own wisdom, but from His revelation. When He removes the scales from our eyes, we no longer see Christianity as a label. It becomes a way of life. Ephesians 4 verse 4 to 6 reminds us there is one body, one spirit, and one hope. When our eyes are opened, we recognize that Christianity is more than an accessory. It's about living for Jesus and sharing the wonders He has done. God wants our hearts fully. He desires us to be passionate and deeply invested in Him, His Word, and His Kingdom. He demands our hearts and wants us to be radically devoted to Him. Matthew 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Psalm 34 verse 18 assures us that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. We must examine what we tolerate. As God does not accept a lukewarm faith, we cannot mix God with the world. He is above all. Isaiah 40 verse 25 to 26 challenges us to lift our eyes and see who created everything, as He is powerful and never misses a detail. We must respect God and begin this by measuring our lives against His Word. Prayers Holy Father, thank You for allowing me to see and appreciate the beauty of the Gospel. Thank you for opening my eyes to your glory and grace. Open my eyes to truly understand your amazing grace. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I can only recognize your goodness because you have enlightened me. Lord, you alone see the realities of this world. Help me focus on what truly matters, avoiding pointless arguments over minor issues. Shift my attention to the true gospel of Jesus Christ, which offers no room for misinterpretation. You are all-powerful and all-knowing, seeing far beyond what I can grasp. Help me not to doubt your truth or let uncertainty cloud my vision. Remove any scales from my eyes and grant me clarity. Let my worldview be rooted in your word. Help me walk by faith, recognizing those who may appear trustworthy but are deceivers. Let me see through any falsehoods and hold tightly to the truth. Help me perceive the world as you do, ridding me of my biases. Awaken in my heart a deeper love for you. In Jesus' name I pray. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind 
and lifts up those who are downcast. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. God bless you. Amen. See you in the next video.